So now you decide, okay, that's really cool, but where do I go from here? That's when we break into the demos. That's when we start showing you all the different stuff that this thing can do. And the first thing is on the bottom left, there's a menu option for admin home. You can also, from any community or building, notice it has on the bottom left, there's the community. It tells you what the name of the community is, and there's a little palm tree island kind of thing next to it. If you click there, since you're admin, you can actually edit this community just by bouncing right there. Otherwise, you can click the building and edit the building from there. Uh, on the right side, we have our profile, and you can click edit your profile. You can edit your avatar here. You have 3D stats, which are stuff that you've built and things that you've shared and all kinds of stuff. Uh, then also underneath the menu over here, we have turning sounds on and off. And yes, it does have 3D sound. We can actually put a sound on anything in the scene and it'll be 3D. It'll be quieter as you walk away and louder as you get closer. So the other thing is we have different camera views. So you can jump from follow camera to first person camera to a scene camera. Um, we have a self camera, which you saw when we were setting up our avatar. You can also turn on a second camera and now you have it up in the top right and you can even change what that one uh, view that one's using at the, at the time. So we can switch that around. Um, there's also some things if you are in a big scene and you want to know how to get around, you can turn a compass on, which happens to be behind here. The red arrow will always point at the building that is closest to you at any point in time. So if you go walking off or whatever, and all you have to do is see which direction the arrow is and notice as I turn and walk away, it's telling me, hey, it's behind me. So you can use the red arrow on the item and see even as I walk forward, it's creeping to the side even though the compass isn't rotating. It's actually pointing at wherever the center of the building is located. So we can find out at any point in time where our buildings are in relation to where we're standing. Okay, another thing on here is for the programmers and stuff, we have the mold count, which is your meshes, and FPS is your frames per second. So you can see how fast and well your computer's doing. Um, there's some arrows when you run, so it's a little helper thing for people that run in first person. You can actually, if you're playing a gun game, then you got a gun in front of you. You just follow the gun. Well, when you don't, I found that it's easier to have arrows on the scene only because it helps you line up walking through doors, especially if the doors are narrow or something. It'll help you line up as you're walking. But that's just an option. It's it's only for beginning, you know, it's for people getting used to the system and trying to figure out how to use it. We also have some adjustments for mo movement speed and how fast you rotate. So you can adjust based on your computer how well you need to move um, if you want to speed him up so that he walks faster or if you want to slow it down if it's moving too quick. And you can also change it. Like if you're rotating your mouse and you're going, oh, it seems kind of slow, you can actually up these settings and now it rotates faster. And okay, so that takes movement speed. Uh, one other option we have, we have graphics quality. If, if you leave it in the middle, it's the optimum that we've designed. If you have a supercomputer and you can push some really high quality graphics and everything else, then you can always choose higher and that will force everything to be in the original graphic that it was designed. Uh, the optimal has a balance of some things in the original graphics so that you see some things in real detail, but other things aren't because they don't need to be when you're farther away. So optimum is usually best for everybody. If your machine's running slow, you can always go to lower, which forces it not to use any of the original graphics, which tend to be larger than the other stuff. Okay, so that just kind of gives you a little rundown on that part. And, oh, uh, shadow quality, same type of features. You can turn off or on shadows because the more shadows it tracks, the slower your machine would run if you have a slow computer. So you can turn those off or on. And then of course, just like in the menu bar down below, you can turn off and on the mute and that works there. And then we have multiplayer settings. So if somebody else visits the same scene, they'll show up in the scene and we'll actually see each other as we walk around. Now, the other part of this is in the settings menu, when you choose your camera view, so I like, you know, I went to the follow camera. This is where I'm looking at right now. And I can choose what type of 
lens I want it to use. So do I want to be in 3D? This is why it is 3D internet. First of all, buildings can be anywhere on the internet and then brought onto the site. But yet at the same time, you can be looking at it with, hey, poor man's 3D, which is 3D glasses, which I sell for three of them for $5. So you can get the red cyan glasses and you can put those on and see it in 3D. Or you can, if you have VR headset, you can go into that view. Or if you have the VR that supports gamepad, you can go there. Um, Babylon, which is the gaming engine behind the scenes here that we're using, Babylon supports a lot of different types of uh, game uh, VR sets, and I'll be adding them to this list so that you can pick very specific ones. Like if you have the Oculus, you can actually choose it on a list, and it'll be optimized for that particular game set. But we're just still testing them all out and trying them and stuff, so we'll, we'll get to that. Okay, so that takes you through these settings. Uh, multiplayer settings. If you have a slow machine, I, re I recommend you turn that off. If you don't, then it's cool to see other people in the scene. Um, no matter what, it keeps a heartbeat going. So there will be internet traffic when multiplayer is on. If you wanna, if your machine's running slow, you can turn it off and then basically you're just using your machine and nothing else is hitting on the traffic. Okay, so that's just a little idea. The other part is you can turn the IDs above everybody else's heads off or on and then the maximum number of avatars. If you walked into a scene, and let's say there were 5,000 people visiting this scene at the time, then your computer might not be able to handle seeing that many people at once. But by setting the number of avatars down lower, what happens is the ones closest to you, you see first. So you don't have to worry about people in the distance, you're just getting the ones that are immediate interaction to you. If you see somebody in multiplayer, if you just click on them with your left mouse button, then it pops up a chat window on the left, oh, excuse me, on the left side. And you can actually type chat with them. Okay, so that is the front end of the machine and the browser, which all of our users get to do. Now, there's an admin home button or you can choose to go in one that's particular to one of your scenes. I'm gonna go to the admin home button first, which is just that admin.php file underneath your site. Okay, and on here, what we have is we have a number of menu options, starting with the dashboard. On the dashboard, it'll tell you how many community scenes and 3D buildings and 3D things that you have. To break that down, first of all, 3D communities are your scenes. That's your landscape, that's your roads, that's the connectors. That's what everybody gets as all part of their scenes. That's the main piece. Then you put buildings on those scenes. Now, a building doesn't have to be a physical building. It can be anything you want it to be. So it could be a soccer field where you walk up on it and now you're playing soccer. So it's really cool that it has those different layers of what you can do. Then, uh, basically, as you walk up on the buildings, it loads them. And when you walk away, they unload. Now, there's different levels. So you can see something from a far distance. You get closer, it loads more of it. Then you get closer and it loads the insides and stuff. There's different things like that that these buildings do. We'll go into some more details on how all that stuff works at a later time. But for now, just know that you can you have your buildings and then you have your things, which are your avatars, vehicles, your trees, your furniture, your any a bridge. It could be anything that you need it to be. But those things can be placed into buildings or into 3D communities. So if I build a statue, make it look really cool and everything. I could put it inside of a building or I could put that statue inside of a community scene. Um, you know, so there, it just gives you the options to build different things. Uh, underneath this, we have updates, which right now it shows that it's up to date. If we have an update up here, you'll see a button right there. All you have to do is click the button, it'll go out, download the zip file, and it'll automatically install it into its own directory and run. So, okay. That takes care of that. And then we have the media library. This is where all the files that you upload go to. So we have the files that you have. We have some stock images. We have 3D objects. Here's some different items that were built in Blender with animations even. 
and then you can import them into here and you can actually use them in your scene. So you just, you just basically select one and put it right into a scene. So we have completely tied the gap between Blender and creating some really advanced objects with animations and everything and being able to drop them right into Babylon scenes. So after that, we have um, Walk the Web Downloads. Now, this is where you can go look for communities, buildings, and things. Uh, you can find, just like we had in the install process, you can select, and let's say you say, oh, okay, Snow Island Community. Let me click that button. Well, what it does is it now gives you that particular community. You'll have a copy of it, and you can use it. It's a copy. You can do anything you want with it because you now own that copy, and it's now yours. So you can create different things. You can add it, change it, modify it, whatever you want to do. And ultimately, you're going to be able to upload these items and actually share them back out for other people to use. Now, we have Snow Island and Small Island 3D Community. Those were the two that we've chosen so far. All I have to do is click this button and it'll load it. Otherwise, notice at any time, I can go to my 3D Communities and I can say Select 3D Community and it'll show me that list again. The other part is Add New Community. This is a hot button that takes you right to communities on the Media Libraries page. So you don't have to worry about that. You just go right to Communities. I want to create one and you can say Add New Community. Now you get to pick. If you want to add a like a blank community and start from scratch, then you pick this first one. It has a road, so you get some type of orientation where zero, zero point on the, on the area is. And that's about it. You start with everything else and you can even delete the road and do whatever you want to go from there. Okay, so then we have buildings. Same thing. We've, we have our castle home that we already had. You can come in here, add new 3D building, and you can actually select different things like, how about this A-frame looking lodge? Okay, now we have an A-frame looking lodge. Okay, so loading up and grabbing the final images for that. And we now have... Da, 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 no. <laughs> Downloading the images. <laughs> images take a little longer than all the rest of the data. And three, two, one... Writing them to the drive. And there we go. Now we have a mountain lodge. Okay, and if I say, if I just click the button, then guess what? Loads right up into the scene. Now I have to tell you this from the scratch. I built a lot of these templates or these, you know, designs and stuff before I built uh, the avatars, added them into the scenes. Well, one of the things that happened were the avatars are 180 degrees out of phase with the new buildings. So just turn around and take a look. You'll find the things and buildings and stuff probably behind you if you can't see it in the scene. Now, once you get something, the cool part about that is once you have something, I can move to wherever I like. So let's say I want to go over here where I'm near the front door. Okay, this is, this is where I would normally want my starting place to be. All I have to do is... There's Edit 3D Building, but there's also Options and Settings. In Options and Settings, I can set the starting position. I, all I have to do is move to where I want, click Use Starting pos uh, Current Position, and it's done. That's all it took. Now, every time I load this building, I'm facing this way, and I'm in this exact same position that you just saw. Okay, also we have in options and settings, we have 3D building information. Now this part here is where this is the name of the place that you have. So this is 3D Mountain Lodge. I can just change the name. I can also add my Google Analytics ID. This same layout is in the community, building, and things. So you can go to options and settings. I tried to make the menus as consistent as possible. Go to options and settings, go to the 3D building information in this case, or if it's a thing or a community, go to the information page. And then you can set the Google Analytics ID. And on certain pages, there's going to be something that's hide or show advanced options. In this particular case, we don't have something really here. It's a alt tag, where if you move your mouse over the building, for example, it would show an alt tag for um, ADA compliance and different things. So we're working on that. It's not fully implemented yet, but you'll see a lot more of that in the future. I just wanted to keep the placeholder in, in view there. Okay, so then, moving from there, we have permissions. Now, 
I can add another user that's in my system already, which I'll show you how to add users shortly, but I can actually just type in their ID here and I can add them with dev access or admin access. Dev access means they can develop this particular item. So they can make changes to it, they can change textures, they can add blocks and buildings and create things for it, or they can, you know, or or they can take things away. They can they can edit the building. If you go to admin access, they can edit the building, but they also can set permissions for somebody else. But this is micromanaging. So if I gave somebody access to edit this particular building, then I would make them um, an architect or a developer or a um, graphics artist in the user role setting, then they would have access to admin and they would be able to get in here and work on that particular building. But that doesn't mean they have access to work on any other building. It is actually building specific, uh, community specific or thing specific. So these permissions have to do with micromanaging who gets to work on what. Now, if you need somebody just have, hey, open systems, they need to work on everything, then you can send them as admin and they will, as a role on the main part, and they will have access to all the stuff you do. Okay. Um, let's see, then here's a cool one also. We have building snapshot. Now, when you browse a building or you browse a community, when you give somebody the link, like in Facebook, there's a picture that shows up with that link. This lets you set that picture. So all I have to do is stand wherever I wanna stand and I can take a picture and set the default snapshot. Now, I'm gonna teach you a really cool trick though. Because the picture that I just took, notice, I'm seeing half the building. There's this little quick editor settings down on the bottom. One of them in particular is avatar camera on. If I click the button, it releases the camera from my avatar. Now, I can move the mouse, the scroll wheel will move it forward or backwards. And if you hold down the left mouse button, you can, uh, you can, move the screen around to see wherever you want to face so you can you can navigate it to wherever you want to be and when you get right where you want it to be then I can come up here like this and go okay now it's centered in my screen I like the picture and I can set the default snapshot that way so it's very helpful when doing the snapshots but also when you're building something to be able to detach from the avatar, use that camera to walk anywhere you want from any perspective, no gravity applies, nothing else, you just get to move around as you'd like to move around. Okay, once we have that set, now if anybody browses this particular building, that's what they're gonna see is this picture. If I pass out the link on Facebook, they're gonna get this picture. Okay, so we also have Edit 3D Building. I'm going to get into this and more into tutorials, but what this does is it lets you edit the building. Whoops, I ran through the floor. Stay above the ground. <laughs> okay, so now if I say add new building block, I can come in here and just say, oh, I want a box or I want, for example, a sphere. And it'll give me a sphere. I get the choice of position. XYZ and if you just hold down the button you can move it any way you like or you can tap it and it'll move it slower. It also has these guidelines to help you aim and decide if it's in line with something else. If you don't like those lines you can actually turn them off in this little quick editor setting and it'll turn off and on. So if you're working with a small object and the lines are getting in the way you can turn them off and see what it looks like. Uh, or if you're moving something, you want to remove it and see what does it look like now, and then you want to see it again to line it up some more, you can do that. Uh, but you can move XYZ positions, and you can also, you can uh, length, which is your width, you know, depth, and you can actually pull it in three different directions, and you can change the shape of the object that you're working with, whatever size and shape you want it to be. And then you can also rotate it in three different axes. So it gives you a lot of control of how you place something in your scene. So let me give it a little bit of perspective here. And the other part is we have coloring. You can come over here and just click on. There's three different tabs to click on. The diffuse color is the core color of the object. Okay. Um, let's see. The core color of the object. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm sorry. I said that backwards. 
it's from bottom to top if I think about it. Down here, this is gonna be the core object itself. This will be the color that it mainly is. Up here, this is going to be the reflected ambient light that hits it. So it's gonna be like from the sun, what color you want it to reflect when it hits it. So that's our side that gets hit by the sun. Then this specular color is the actual sunspot. So you can change what color that is, or like in this case, let's say I toned it down with having it blue, now it's not so obvious. Um, like if you had an object that wasn't metal, you could turn that way down so that it looks, doesn't have a very bright shine on it. Uh, if it is metal, then you might want to crank that up and say, yeah, we, you know, we're getting a lot of light reflected off of it. And, you know, you want to like lighten up the whole thing so that you show that the metal is there. So it's all about that stuff. Now, the other thing you can do is you can actually choose a texture. And in this case, if I choose texture, okay, we don't have one set yet, but we'll get in here. And I can pick from, you know, my stock images. I gave you some images to start with or you can actually upload some more. Or notice I have this thing that says my building images. At any time, if you click that one, what it'll do is it'll show you any images that are currently being used in this building. That's very helpful when you want to match something that you already had. And let's say I had 100 different images on my image screen. Well, that's very easy to just go, okay, I need the one that looks like shingles, or I need the one that looks like this, or this, or whatever it is. You can pick one that already exists. And when you pick it, let's see, is it gonna update on it for me? Okay, we gotta refresh the page if it does something like that, but no problem, no problem. We're getting there, we're getting there. <laughs> I push my luck on the demo. No, just kidding. Nope, the code's out there, and like I said, it's still beta testing, and we're still going forward with it, and we're working on perfecting it. So there'll be updates available, and we'll always be doing things. But in this case, what we do is we'd select the, we select the different, uh, we can select a texture, we can select uh, you know different, different items of whatever it is. I'm gonna go back to the color for now just because of that. And then eventually you have the item to save sphere, and now that sphere will be with your item anywhere you go. If you have something and you wanna edit it, all you have to do is right click it, and then it'll grab it again, and you can now work with it. There's also this feature, I have times where things are behind other things and you can't see them. But if you know about where they are, every time you right click, it'll cycle through what's behind it. So it's possible, and because of these arrow lines are on, you can tell which object it grabbed. So if I come over here and I click it again, notice it's now grabbing something, the wood panel back here, the ground floor. If I click it again, it knows that I've already had that object, now it tries to find the next object in line. So what we're going through, which that one was the glass on the front window. So as you can see, I just basically click it multiple times and it'll decide between like here, I'm grabbing the floor. If I do this, now I'm grabbing this piece of glass that makes up the front windows. Okay, so you can actually cycle through and pick things just by clicking again. Becomes very helpful. Okay, when I'm all done, we just click save box. Oh, we also have the option to delete things. If you want to, you can say delete sphere and it's gone. If you delete something and you didn't mean to, we also have recover deleted items. And okay, it didn't show up in the list yet. I'll check on the refreshing of that, but we can actually click on it and bring it back. Okay, so there's other things in here. Web objects are actually a little bit more advanced, but we have things like a video player. We have things like 3D text that you can put on the scene. We have a candle flame. We have a light bulb that actually will illuminate from wherever it's sitting. Um, we have a flag and a tree. We have smoke. Look at this. If you click smoke, there it is. We have smoke and you can place the origin of the smoke anywhere you like. So we have active objects. And notice if you uh, scale this thing like wider or something, what happens is it scales the smoke also. So you can actually set it to whatever you want it to be in three dimensions, whatever pattern you want the smoke to come out. If you want a real tight smoke, you can just move them on in. Uh, you can also fine tune them with these numbers and bring it in even tighter. So like if you wanted something to be the exhaust of a car or something, you can actually make it look like it's coming out of a very fine tunnel. And see, now we have it coming out of a fine tunnel. If you don't want it to go that far, 
then you can shorten it just by shortening this. Notice how it's bringing it down where it's closer to the origin. So you got a lot of control of what you do with these things. Uh, but that's just some playful objects that you can use. Uh, we'll constantly be adding in more objects and more things all the time that you can use in the scenes. The other thing we can do is add a 3D thing. Now in this case, we haven't added any 3D things yet. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we're gonna go done editing. I'm gonna go to my 3D things and I'm gonna say add new 3D thing. So there's some default objects. And if I want to look around, I can even say, um, there, you can type some keywords. There's a bunch of things in there. There's like a footbridge and there's a stone bridge and um, we'll see what kind of chairs we have. We have a well, table for chairs. We have a couch, different kind of couch, different kind of chairs. We even have a rocking chair. So we have a park bench. We have all kinds of stuff in here. Everything I was making, I kept on throwing different things in here. So there's a lot of different options you can choose from. Uh, when you find something you like, I'm just going to pick, um, I'll pick a conference table just to do it. And when I get this item, it adds it to my scene. And like I said, download some images. And now we have a conference table. So if I go back to editing my building and I say add 3D thing, now I have that conference table as an item in, in the list. If I move to wherever I want to be, and I can also detach from the avatar camera or I can be attached to it. Um, if I walk over to wherever I want this to be, I'm just going to put it inside this front room. If it's gonna place it in front of wherever the camera is at the time. Now remember, if you're too close to a wall, it could show up behind the wall, and you gotta walk through the wall to see where it's at and see what's going on with that. So if I click on this item, add the 3D thing, it's going to put it there. Sometimes after you do it, sometimes it doesn't load until you move a little bit with your avatar. Um, I'll work on that to make sure it does it every time, but in this particular case, it wants me to be closer to where it's at. So let's get closer now see it it already appear, appeared. What it is is there's what we call action zones and it tells it when you're in a certain area to load something that you're near. So in this particular case it was my avatar was too far from it. Um, my camera view is independent of where I'm walking but everything loads or unloads based on where the avatar is located. Okay, so I have this item, and first of all, it's in the floor, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to raise it up so it's not in the floor. We only need it above the floor, and this is where these lining lines come up handy because watch this. When it gets too close to the floor, those lines kind of disappear right there. I know I'm just at the floor level. The other thing is... Notice the scale. Every item that you place inside of another item, so if you place a thing in a building or a community, or you place a building into a community, you can resize it and scale that particular item. Like if I wanted this to be for giants, I could go two by size in all directions, and now we have one big table. But in this case, that's a little bigger than I want to go. In fact, the way it's sitting here, First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate Y axis and I'm going to kind of make it fit this other direction since that's the length of the room. And then once we get it there, I can put it like on an angle there. And now I'm going to go a little bit larger with. See, now I made it more of an oval instead of such a long thin table. Um, you can also change any one of the directions at a time. You can also rotate in any one of the directions and it grabs the full object. So if you had some and you want to place it on its side or whatever, lean it against a wall or whatever you want to do, you can do that. Um, then we also have, uh, if you, once you save it, notice how when you have something in a room, you can right click and actually grab this item again and it'll say it up at the top what it is that you've grabbed. So conference table Cherrywood large. Okay, that's the name of this table that I have. Once I'm editing it, you can also click this little shortcut here, 
open 3D thing in editor. Because if you wanted to change the actual table, like let's say you wanted to put a different texture on it, or you want to color it, or you want to do something else with it, then you would load it in the editor. You can either do this shortcut and just click it right here, or it's equivalent to go in, oops, I didn't mean to click that. Sorry, I was one button higher than I meant to click. <laughs> okay, or, or you can go back to my things. You can click on select 3D thing and it'll bring it up and then you click it and you go to that item. So it has a, like I said, a quick way. If you see something in a scene, you go, ooh, this needs to be fixed. You can right click it, scroll up, excuse me, scroll down and basically you can just uh, tell it, bring it up and in the editor. But you only work on one community, one building, or one thing at a time. So you pick which layer you're editing. You can have other things in the scene or in the building, but you still need to only work on one object at a time at the edit level. Okay, so we have that. Um, and as you can see, we can download at any time more things. You can also edit the thing. Oh, the first thing is notice how I told you before, I warned you, some of these objects are going to show up behind you when you start the scene. So the first thing I want to do is, okay, next time I open this, I want to start right next to it. So I'm going to go into Options and Settings, Set Starting Position, and Use Current Position. Now, every time I open this, I will be right next to it. <laughs> the other thing you can do, if I decide I like this table the way it is, but I want to make another one, something else, all I have to do is click Copy 3D Thing, and it duplicates it and then I can work on the copy and it left my original alone. So it's another helpful way of being able to create a copy of something, make it do something else. Like let's say I place this table inside of a building and it's inside of something that's a scene that people are visiting. I don't want to change this table, but let's say I need another table with some changes to it. All I do is copy. Now I've got a copy of that table. Now I work on the copy, change it the way I want, and drop that one into different scenes or buildings or wherever I want to put it. You can also click Delete 3D Thing and it'll clear it off your list and it'll be gone. Okay, so after that, now you can see that each one of these community building and things all have familiar items that you can do. I've tried to be very consistent with the menu items so that when you do one of them, you can do them all. Uh, the same thing is there are some that have a little differences. For example, the community lets you set the sky scene, which is something that let's go back to real quick. Let's go to select community. Oh, let's open up Snow Island. I haven't opened this one up uh, from this demo, so let's see if everything's working the way it should. Yes, we have Snow Island. Come on, is it still loading? Or is that one broken? Okay. I know I didn't do it, test it out before the demo. It's all right, it's all right. We're gonna leave this one as a work in progress. <laughs> okay, let's select our 3D community, the other one. I am gonna be working on the shared site and I'm gonna work on some of these demos and make sure that the places that you download are all ready for this latest version of the code. Okay, so we have this scene right here and I'm gonna walk outside because, of course, editing the sky when you're inside a building isn't very easy to do. Okay, I'm going to also detach my avatar from itself because I like to look around in a full area when I'm looking at a scene. So I want to be able to move around really quickly. And that's what I'm going to do. Okay, uh, edit. Oops, sorry, I clicked the wrong button. Edit 3D Community. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, edit landscape and scene. There's a couple options in here. First of all, we have sky setting. Now, by default, you come up with set day scene. And so that's what we're looking at. You can click one button and it will move to sunrise scene, which I think we need to move over this way because I think it's behind us. And there's our sunrise. Ooh, look at that water sun reflecting on the water, the whole bit. We also have a sunset scene, which as you can predict, would be the other polar opposite of the sky. So there's our sunset scene. Kind of looks familiar. Now, we also have a night scene, which is kind of cool because what I did was I actually turned the sun into the moon and gave it a haze. So by the time it gets over here and sets, now it has a nice glow on the water and it's like a full moon. So that's what I chose to do with it. Now, any one of these scenes, let's go back to the sunset scene just to do it. 
And this one's going to bring it around back to where we started a minute ago. And once it's there, okay. Now, any one of these, you can go to advanced options and you can actually fine tune what you're seeing. For example, solar inclination. If I go a little bit farther, it's going to set. If I go this way, it's going to go in increments and it's going to rise up and you can set it at any height that you want it to be. Cool stuff, huh? Okay, and then we also have the sky luminous. There's a whole bunch of settings here. Each one will decide how bright the sky is, how the colors are. Uh, you know, there's, there's a ton of different settings here and you can move the sliders or you can click the buttons on the end. You can play around with these. Some of them have, uh, each one has a little description. You can see some of them have to do with the haze. Some have to do with the patterns. If you're into atmospheric studies, then you're going to be happy and you're going to see all these things and go, I know what that is. Me, I read about it when I set them up there and went, cool, I'll add them. Now, <laughs> so when you're all done and you get everything the way you want it to sit, then all you have to do is click Save Setting, which is down on the, or Save Sky. And now that sky is what you're going to get every time somebody comes to your site. Now, another thing is we have ground settings. And what this one has to do with is underneath the water. Um, this particular one, it's hard to see. When you don't have water, or when we look into the water, we're gonna see that there's, see there's a pattern of ground underneath the water. This one allows you to change that texture and decide which texture you want to use underneath, the, you know, on that bottom. It's it's what we call the extended ground. It'll be the one that's endless that people can't run off the edge of. Okay, and you just click the new setting and you can change it anytime you want. The other one that we have here is you can actually change the water depth. Now by changing water depth, what you're actually doing is changing where that extended ground is from the water position. Water position is where it is. If you make the extended ground higher than zero, which is the water position currently, then it will basically get rid of the water and your scene does not have water in it this way. Doesn't mean you can't add a pond or something from editing your scene and adding things from that point of view. But from here, you the you know full on like here, we have an island with water all the way around it and it's pretty much an endless seam of water. Well, that has to do with because I gave it a depth. Now watch what happens when I move the water. So what we have is, notice we have the edge of the island here and stuff, and you can kind of see a little bit of an outline of where the island ends. Now I'm going to make this water, or the ground underneath there, I'm gonna bring it up, just so you can kind of see what it does. And there it is, that is our ground. So that's what happens when you go to zero. Now we have the extended ground, you can run on it for days. It's basically the Sultan Sea, it's dried up, <laughs> okay? And to have water in a scene, all you have to do is lower the depth. Once you have it at least one square down, you know, one item down, then it will automatically put the water in the scene. Uh, you can go to whatever depth you like, if you want it over their heads or if you want it to be where it's waiting and you can walk forever and you're just like in a shallow water, you can make it whatever depth you like. I tend to pay attention to how I build the island and if it's, make sure that the island meets where the extended ground is just above where the island, you know, pattern meets and stuff. So, but that's what I do. And then save depth and it's there. Ooh, we have an error on that. I'll check that out. Don't worry. It's a beta test. We'll do things. We also have gravity. So we're able to check the gravity setting and we're able to tell it what we're doing and we can fix, we can uh, work with that. You can change the amount of gravity. Right now, um, right now, I have it always defaulting to 9.8. You can change that and you can actually turn off gravity. Keep in mind that if you turn off gravity, you're gonna be working to keep your avatar whatever direction you wanna move. It's perfectly fine with me. You can play around with those scenes. Uh, with the physics engine, we'll be playing around with the, that some more in the future. It's just framework and getting it all in place. And last but not least, we can add new ground terrain, which means we can add hills, we can add mountains in the distance, we can add other islands, we can do anything we want. And that is where we click on that and then you get the option of what you want to add and where it sits. Um, this particular one, when you click it, I believe it sets it off in the distance. 
Um, if we make it real big, we'd be able to see it, but I'm going to cancel that for now. I have a couple more things I want to show you. I just wanted to show you that there are some things like that. The other piece that you can do is when you get your building set up and stuff, you can actually come in here and you can say, oh, we had that A-frame cottage. Well, I want to put it over here. I want to, I want to have a neighbor. So all I have to do is add or edit buildings in this community. Click that. And here's the castle that I have. Ooh, I got to fix that green. <laughs> and, oh, it didn't load the list. Okay, I'll be doing some updates. You know I will. But just want to let you know, there'll be a drop down there. I'll have that fixed by tomorrow. <laughs> but uh, there's, there's a drop down there. You click from the drop down, and then you added the building just like you would have added the thing. See, I don't know if it's a problem with the file that I uploaded to the... Um, to GitHub or if it was a problem in my original scene. So I'm going to check that out and I'll make an update to the code on the site if it is. If it is. But we'll get you updated and that'll work. Okay, done editing. And finally, moving on, we have users. All you have to do to add a new user is you can click right here and you can type in username. It gives you a sample of a password that you can give them. Otherwise, you can type in your own. Um, and I'm just going to put it under, I'm just going to throw an email in there for now. Save user, and we now have two users. You can also edit that user. You can click view user, and you can change some settings for them if you need to. You can also edit the roles, and you can add them in a role. So you can decide. If they're just a developer, then they're only going to see the top menu options for my 3D communities, buildings, and things, but they're only going to be able to edit the ones you give them permission to. Okay, so that kind of gives you that idea of the separation of the two. Um, that allows you to hire a graphics artist or bring in a developer or bring in an architect or something and have them work on a scene for you. You don't have to give them admin on your server. You just give them, uh, uh, set them as an architect or developer, whatever you want, and then give them access to that particular item. Okay, I'm going to take this one and I'm just going to give it, um, you know what, we're going to make it a developer add role and now they have a developer role you can either click here to delete the role or we can save the user we can change anything we want um, save user usernames are unique email names are unique okay so we have that in place and now you have users and it shows what roles they are here this is an expansion this is where we're heading in the future we have all plugins right now there are two plugins sitting in there but I have them deactivated. Don't fret about that yet. I haven't finished building the plugins. So when I do, that's where they're gonna show up on the list and we're gonna be able to, you're gonna be able to write plugins also. If you watch uh, the Twitch channel, um, Walk the Web on Twitch, then you're gonna be able to see how to create plugins and work with me on that and you'll be able to create things. Remember, it's a Babylon engine behind it. So you can do anything in Babylon. You can do anything with JavaScript. You can do anything with uh, PHP. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you, give you different hooks where you can tie them into the code so that they can work in these scenes. And you can create different objects to just drag and drop into the scenes. Okay, and then there's settings. And we have, right now, we just have two. Web aliases allow you to create, I don't know why there's three. I'll look at that. But um, you can click this and what it allows you to do is create aliases to pass out URLs that take you to particular items. For example, if I wanted to create a link that is HTTP, the name of my server, my site, and then under buildings, I want to be able to go directly to my castle, for example. So, and then I pick, you know, castle home on this. If I say save web alias, what happens is now, I don't know why there's two of them. I'll fix that. I don't know what's going on. I think it's just the display. It's not doing that in the database, but I'll take care of that. I think it has to do with, I, I bet I know what it is. It has to do with those role permissions. It's duplicated it. I'll fix that. Um, okay, so then basically I can use this, and now I can pass out this link to people. And basically when they go to it, now I've got one thing wrong on that one, but I'll fix it. You're hearing me say that a few times. Don't worry, it's a work in progress. But now when they go to it, they can load up and see the castle that I designed. And doo -doo 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 -doo. Let me guess, I didn't set the starting position on the castle itself. Yes, I did it on the table and I did it on the scene, but I didn't do it on the building itself. 
Okay, but notice we are directly at the building in this scene. We, we were able to do that. So it's a quick way to be able to run over and, you know, we get the, we can tell somebody, hey, check out my castle. And they can see just the castle. They don't have to see your whole scene. The other part is we can actually build paths that have the domain, then what community they're in. So you can have multiple communities on your server, multiple scenes, and then what building you want to start in front of. So it gives you a lot of options of how to move and be in different places within that scene. So uh, different starting positions all, you know, like let's, let's say I build a big scene and it's got 10 different places. I can give it the name castle and you would be starting in that scene right in front of the castle opposed to in front of something else like the mountain lodge that we had. Okay, so that gives us a way to pass out and create unique URLs. And then we have some developer tools. This is very friendly. This first part of this is just a repeat of the quick editor settings. But the last one is list loaded objects. This one is very friendly for programmers. If you click F12 on your keyboard for like in here, we're able to see the different things going on and don't worry about that right now. But one of the things that I can do in here is, let me get to the bottom of this. Okay, is I can say, oh, show me my current meshes. And it'll show me all the meshes that are currently on the screen by name. And I can look at them and I can actually see what they are. So I know what is loaded at any one time. I can look at connecting grids and actions. So these things are all different things like thing molds. Do I have any things on the screen? Nope, there were none. Buildings, okay, it loaded all the building ones. And now I see building mold and I'll tell you about this stuff when you watch my stream and we talk more about the code side. But this is a way to troubleshoot stuff that you're building for your plugins and stuff. So I just wanted to show you that it is available and we've, we have some developer tools that help you work in this scene. Okay, and with that, it's time for sunset. No, <laughs> actually, the sun just rose in this scene because <laughs> I cleared the scene. <laughs> so, but I want to just thank you all for coming in here today and checking that out. We have, um, we, we have basically 3D internet. You can now download it at GitHub.com slash HTTP 3D slash Walk the Web, and tomorrow. I'm going to do a complete walkthrough on the code. We're going to 